Hello and welcome to another episode of History with Andy Ackright. I'm Andy Ackright. This is a very weird coincidence going on here. Uh, on October 16th of 2020, I made a video about Robinson Park. Robinson Park in Lawrence. It's surrounded by the bridges coming over the Kansas River. And then here coming 6th Street, going across Vermont there, going across uh, Massachusetts there. And in order to get to in order to get to this park, you have to go to here on Massachusetts, across the street here, then you go over to here, and then across the street here. Okay? You can't get to it. You can't get to it from here. So it says Robinson Park, 1860, right? So I was at Lecompton, Lecompton Constitutional Hall and Tim Roos uh, said, you know, that, that rock uh, in uh, Charles Robinson Park, it was uh, stolen from the Kaw, Kansas people. What? So I have to look this up, right? And then I get here and should this park be named for Charles Robinson? Robinson Park, 1929.com. Now, if you check it out, okay, today is November 17th. I made the video on October 16th. I found out about it, about the, the, the stones being uh, from the car. Uh, Shoot, when was it? It was a Friday, I think. It just a, just a few days ago, um, and all of a sudden, it's like people have people have noticed. So so this is a very weird thing, uh, and if you go to that site, they're going to enter into a dialogue. And it's like, wait, people are actually doing the right thing. So this video was to like be like. Hey, check this out. Something you didn't know, but people actually know. So, it says, what does this rock mean to the Kansas people? Robinson Park, 1929. Okay, now, it, it was dedicated in 1929. Okay, the plaque. Um, and Charles Robinson was the first governor of Kansas. Um, first uh, official governor. Andrew Reeder was the territorial governor. And uh, he was also the uh, superintendent of uh, the Haskell ha uh, College, which is now the Haskell Indian Nations University. Hope I got that right. Um, so he, he was uh, pretty important out here. And on you see here, Robinson Park, named in honor of Charles Robinson, first governor of Kansas. So people are honoring him, right? And you see on here, you know, 1854 to 1929, it's the 75th anniversary of the, basically the founding of, of uh, Lawrence, Lawrence, Kansas, to the pioneers of Kansas, who in devotion to human freedom came into a wilderness, suffered hardships, and faced dangers and death to found the state in righteousness. And a lot of them from Massachusetts. So Massachusetts is a major street here. Okay, so what this is saying is that in 1854, the these people, when they, when they opened up the state, Nebraska-Kansas Act, uh, Kansas didn't become a state until 1861. 60? 61. Um, and uh, so w when they opened up the state, it was going to be chosen by the people to be free or slave. And uh, so pro, pro slavery, anti slavery. So people from free states, Massachusetts, you know, the Northeast, or, uh, yep, Northeast came to settle and to, to make it free. Okay. So we've gotten that out. Look at all these people, they're driving around, they have no idea, because I didn't know. So the Wichita 
Eagle had an article, Sacred Places, on February 20th, 2011, Indian Rock. There is a sacred rock in Lawrence that geologists say was deposited by a glacier millions of years ago. This is that rock. Now, people wanted it to be moved onto uh, the land of the capital in Topeka, um, but a guy from Lawrence beat him to it. He, with the uh, Santa Fe uh, Railroad, he had a 200 ton crane, lifted this baby up, brought it here, and put it in Lawrence. And they, can you really, are you gonna move this thing? It's interesting, it has a, a crack in the line, but okay. So, glacier millions of years ago. It was originally located along the banks of the Kaw River of the Mount at the mouth at the mouth of Shungananga Creek. That's right. I couldn't say mouth, but I could say Shungananga Creek. The Ka people used the 10 foot tall pink quartzite rock known as the Red Rock for religious ceremonies. It was also a sacred place for the Ka, Ka to obtain stones for making pipes. It was an ancient prayer rock, said Jim Pepper Henry, a Kaw tribal member. Now this is quotes directly. I'm reading the article from the Wichita Eagle to you. The Kaw had 89 songs for this rock alone. The Kaw had 89 songs for this rock alone. Kaw believe that along the Kansas River, there were several spirit villages where the souls of warriors and all good dreamers went on their death. So, this is on the banks of the Kaw River, mouth of the Sunganunga Creek, and the Kaw believe that there were several spirit villages where the souls went, and they used this for religious ceremonies. It was sacred to them. Okay. So, we're looking at a memorial, a monument, and then on October 16th, this is what I talked about because I talked about this park that I kept driving past. I had no idea what it was, but it had a giant rock, so I wanted to find out. And I thought it was to the residents of Lawrence, I mean, and it is. But it's on a stolen sacred rock. Stolen sacred stone. Pink quartzite stone. So the land is settled 1854. On June 4th, 1873, the Kaw Indians were forced to leave Kansas. Kaw Indians also uh, known as the Kansas tribe. Um, it, it gets kind of, kind of, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, it gets a little uh, bundled up there. But yes, Kansas and Kaw. So they were forced to leave Kansas for a new reservation in Indian Territory. The tribal headquarters are in Kaw City, Oklahoma, just over the Kansas border. The Ka, the Kansa, which Kansas is named after, are now kicked out and they live just on the other side of the Kansas border. So, 1929, the Ka's sacred rock was moved from Robinson Park, moved to Robinson Park, near Lawrence's City Hall. That building is City Hall. 1929, you didn't have all this, right? 
A plaque was then placed on the massive rock honoring the town's European founders. Now, European founders because the Northeast, they were coming from Europe. Think about, yeah. You know, G-Dub, not, not George W. Bush, George Washington, right? The British. So, these signs, should this be named after Charles Robinson? Okay, was Charles Robinson important? Yes. Is he buried just outside the city? I, I believe he is. Uh, on the cemetery that's on the north side of the street. On the south side is James Naismith. Um, but the park's named after him and he was superintendent of the Haskell Institute. But they stole this rock. They stole a sacred rock. Now, whether they knew or not, I don't know. I can't tell you. But I would imagine that a rock this large that people worshiped, it was sacred in religious ceremonies that the spirits went on from. This rock was taken and put here, and of all things, of all things, they put a monument to the people who came here and kicked them out. No, these people didn't literally kick them out, but figuratively, the white nation came, get out of here. You know, because Missouri River, the border beyond that was native territory. And so that's why you had Lewis and Clark going on these expeditions. Um, and that's why you had uh, the uh, people guarding the caravans to the Santa Fe Trail because they uh, were sometimes attacked by uh, Native American tribes also on their land but so you're taking over their stuff I don't know what to tell you I I I would ask you to please go to that website and and let them know how you feel now is it okay to do this I mean okay literally I wanna go over here. Sign. What does this rock mean to the Kansas people? Robinson Park, 1929. Please go to that website, robinsonpark1929.com. Check it out. I know the people who actually watch these videos care about history. Please let your voice be known. Even if you wanna keep this rock, even if you wanna keep this, Maybe you want to send it down to Oklahoma where we kicked them out. And I say we because I am white. But look, take a look with me. Here it is, 10 foot tall. I'm gonna go all the way around it. There's the uh, monument to the settlers and to Charles Robinson. you see anything on this side? Nope. So on the north side, nope. How about the west side? Nope. about uh, the south side? No. Man, 
and how about the north side just to those who settled the land. Now granted, the people who settled the land were doing it for a good cause, to make it a free state so that slavery was not allowed here. That's a good thing. Kicking the Native Americans out to Oklahoma, where a large population is still today, just check out their license plates. And when you go down there to the visitor center, you can go and and they will they'll talk to you about all the different tribes. Well those tribes were kicked out. Missouri River Valley, all that stuff going down. There's not even a mention. Not even a mention of what this is. I don't know how they would move it. I don't know what the right thing is to do. But they're asking the question. And yeah, maybe this video is 16 minutes, 17 minutes long. But isn't it worth it? That's the thing. That's the thing. And and people people have said, you know, oh, you need to make your, your videos five minutes long or seven minutes long. Okay. This isn't for entertainment. I mean, this is for history. This is this is to to show you that this is a sacred rock. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But when I knew that it was along the river and they thought that the spirits went there, you know, and they worshipped it and they had songs for it. And and the, and the 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 Native American people, you know, they used oral history, they used stories. It goes back, you know, to the Bible they used stories, right? Old Testament. Well the Native American people use stories still. And they tell these stories. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that there is still at least one song, if not 20 if not somebody knows probably all 89 to this stone they wanted to put it by the capital in Topeka for its geological significance pink quartzite gigantic stone 10 feet guy takes a 200 ton crane picks it up puts it here One more time, I'm gonna tell you that website. Because it's not often that we get to change history, that we get to influence history, that we get to have our voices heard at least. My thing was just gonna be a video today saying, hey, this is jacked up. This is messed up. Got festive Christmas lights on the trees. But that was my video. It's just gonna be, hey, this is messed up. Check this out. And it turned into a 20 minute video because what's 20 minutes compared to how the call valued this stone? The website is Robinson Park 1929.com. You can also just go Robinson Park 1929 in Google and it will come up. Should this park be named for Charles Robinson? I, I don't know. What did this rock stand for? Should there be something that says its significance? That's for you to decide. Robinson Park 1929.com. Go be part of history. This has been another episode of History with Andy Ackright. 